Hello, my name is Jose Romero, and for the special topic in technical editing, I will discuss technical editing and identity. Um, for the topics for this session, we will discuss technical editing and the three P's of social justice um, and how these relate to identity. We'll also discuss editing and feminist theory. Um, we'll also discuss an example of intersectional feminism. And finally, we will discuss queer usability for, for second, two cases of social media apps, right? Our focus will be with feminists and queer theory. And let's begin. So um, three authors, uh, Rebecca Watson, Kristen Moore, and Natasha Jones wrote in 2019, technical communication after the social justice turn, building coalitions for action. This book is referenced with authors Sam Plan and Ryan Cheek as they and Ryan Cheek, as they explain the three P's of social justice, positionality, privilege, and power. Um, and I believe this understanding these terms would make a great a great way to uh, provide context to our discussions on identity and editing. The first concept is positionality, and it refers to how identity is relational, fluid, and changing. It is not stationary or fixed in time. Um, it is also related to intersectionality because it considers the perspectives and experiences of individuals from underrepresented groups and marginalized communities. For example, I am a queer man of color. I am Hispanic. I'm also Puerto Rican. I'm also a, rel a relatively young adult. Each of these positionalities will, 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 will change throughout the course of, of the project that I'm working on or throughout the course of life. They are not, um, they're not fixed and each of them will crisscross each other with, with one another um, depending on the circumstances. The second aspect is privilege, and privilege is defined as unearned advantages from certain positionality. For example, um, I am male, says gender male, and unfortunately there are many privileges that I'm, that I'm able to access rather than me being Hispanic, which there are other certain privileges, probably in certain specific communities, but not in others. Privilege, like positionality, is relational. It is also fluid, but it does, in a sense, affect our perceptions of what we consider uh, what we consider correct or moral or even legal. Then we have power, and power in this case is defined as a distribution of authority in relation to its positionality. Power is not only embedded in politics. Power can also be related embedded in stakeholders, in agencies, in communities, in, in uh, educational settings. Every institutional setting is, in, is related to power. So with positionality, privilege, and power, we can, un we can start unpacking the idea of identity in editing. Oh, sorry. Um, Susan L. Popman writes that all practice is informed by theory. Um, in, her, in her article, she discusses why is studying feminist theory in technical editing courses important. Um, she does provide three examples. It focuses on workplace practices. It allows the textual focus to clarify and fulfill the author's meaning and expectations. And it also provides a pedagogical focus for student-teacher interaction. She also describes that feminine metaphors are used in, in theory to uh, describe traditional women's work as uh, mother, familiar, caretaker, and nurturer. You see these words like, we nurture this, and we embody, um, embody these relationships. Um, also, she explains that emotion and empathy preclude a sense of passion for our work or one's work. Um, okay. Next, we present a case study in intersectional feminism. Uh, we have the, in the journal article, Ian Matheson and Emily January Peterson um, discuss, 
conducted surveys and interviews with 49 working age female technical writers in the Indian cities of Chennai, Hyderabad, and Pune. The questions that were asked in this study include things like work-life balance, stress, the potential evaluation of work, mistreatment, and uncompensated work. In the study, uh, both Matheson and Peterson were attempting to tackle the term of respectable femininity, or as it is a, as defined by Radhakrishnan, the prioritizing of at-home responsibilities over career and money by focusing on motherhood, even while having a career, and by viewing promiscuity as unacceptable. In other terms, women can have careers, but pri their priority is taking care of the health. Now, um, limitations of this study include the national, the author's nationalities. We both, both Master and Peterson are American, and the study was related to India. And so in that case, there is a potential um, for impositions of Western work experiences or Western biases in the cultural setting. Um, India was selected though, because it is an, it is in a corner of the, what we consider the global South. Uh, it is, it also has a significant, uh, fast growing IT tech sector. And it is important to study how the, how um, intersectional feminism is relates to that. So in the study, the Indian women asserted their identity and their legitimacy through technical skills, constructive rhetoric, patience, persistence, and politeness. This means that despite the hurdles that, meant that these female technical um, writers have to face in regards to the quality of their work, to potential devaluation, or even the perceived lack of prestige of their work, they're still managing to use feminist theory to go ahead in their careers, to Develop them to develop themselves and to also create opportunities for more women in their positions to go and place even heights. So this is so this also links to a way that uh Poppin relates to nurturing, caretaking, and empathy as well. Finally, we'll have a brief discussion on queer usability. And it is important to define usability as a form of editing. As Mary E. Rambler explains in her study, usability has always entailed adaptation. She also defines queer usability as the extent to which a product can be used by anticipated marginalized users to achieve specific goals with effectiveness, efficiency, and satisfaction in an extended content, context of use. So Rambler provides two examples of uh, queer usability and how each of them can go wrong. And also please do keep in mind how queer usability, how usability can be reflected on editing. The first one is on Tumblr and it's banned on not safe for work content. Um, in December, on December 17, 2018, Tumblr decided to ban um, not safe for work content, we'll do NSFW, due to concerns of explicit images of children and minors on this platform. It is a legitimate problem that Tumblr decided they needed to take, Tumblr needed to take on. However, two months after the ban went into effect, Twitter almost lost, lost almost 81% of its view count, and NSFW images were still able to be located. We're referring that they lost 500 million views to 120 million views. And LGBTQ plus users felt betrayed at Tumblr's actions over the NSFW ban. If we use the applying these to three Ps, we notice that in positionality, um, this the ban affected the livelihoods of sex workers and the LGBTQ plus community that was looking for an online safe space to discuss these issues. In privilege, so privilege, we see that the affordances to ban content did not distinguish between works of a sexual nature and art. There wasn't a discussion between what is considered artistic, what is considered erotic, or what is considered titillating. And in a sense, the ban serves as a distraction to shareholders and credit card companies. In power, 
uh, imposing mainstream values on sex to online and global communities, which have different values, especially in regards to sex, gender, and identity, was not the correct approach. It provided a reduced income and also safe spaces for online communication, and thus it provides creative chances for exploitation, in particular to these marginalized communities. On the other hand, Rambler knows, uh, Rambler discusses thrust. Um, it is another case study in queer usability. It is built as the dating, the first dating app for queer people of all genders. Um, and here are the features of thrust. Uh, thrust uses community guidelines and site design to center their usability for inclusion and security. They also have a zero tolerance harassment policy. In their own words, the uh, I mean, victims are always believed. The information is encrypted for privacy, and they do have, I mean, users are free to update their gender identification at any time. And we see how each of these, uh, each of these uh, three Ps apply to this. In positionality, it is a harassment-free safe space for Black, Indigenous people of color, and for queer people to feel themselves. In privilege, encryption and zero tolerance policy encourages trust and power. It implies safety and accountability and an emphasis on relationships beyond sex, but doesn't exclude the possibility. And I have here two insights um, that I need to discuss. How can feminist theory be applied to different global communities? This is what we see on Matheson and Peterson's review. Another one. If companies are adapting their usability experiences for accessibility, how can they adapt for inclusivity without standard performance? As we've seen with both Tumblr and um, both Tumblr, as well as with Rust. These are insights and limitations that uh, I that I'd be with 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 these uh, each of these case studies, which I find interesting. And to you, I have two questions for discussion. How can you apply the three Ps to previous special topics on technical editing or to your experience as a technical editor? Finally, do you believe that teaching feminist and or queer theory in technical editing classes can contribute to bridging the gaps in knowledge and representation? I would love to know for your, would love to know your ideas, your thoughts, and your um, insight into this topic. I believe it is very important for us to discuss um, how technical editing relates to our identity, how we can, how our identities do relate to the way we write, to the way we communicate, and also to the way we portray this communication to our to stakeholders and the audience. Okay, thank you so much for this presentation. Muchas gracias, and I hope you have a nice day.